celiac disease was thought to be a very rare condition and we had the opportunity to study um, blood samples which were saved about 1950, so over 50 years ago. And we could use some now sensitive blood tests to identify the people in the, that sample, that group of samples, to see how many of them had celiac disease. And then to follow them up over 45 years to see what happened to those who were positive for celiac disease. Now of course, these patients never knew they had celiac disease. It was a rare diagnosis, um, even in the 1950s when these were when these samples were saved, and subsequent in the subsequent decades. It was not until the 1990s that people start to appreciate that maybe celiac disease was not as rare as we once thought. Anyway, by testing these old samples, we found that celiac disease really was pretty rare. About one in 700 samples were positive for celiac disease, and that was much lower than when we tested people of the same age now. So young people now are much more likely to have celiac disease. It's one in a hundred. We also looked at people who shared the same years of birth as the people we had tested, or we had samples from 1950. So people born in about 1930. And their current rate of celiac disease was also quite high. Not quite 1%, but not much under 1%. Much higher than people with the same birth years had back in 1950. So it seems that celiac disease has become at least five times as common now as it was 50 years ago. And obviously human genes haven't changed, but something has changed in our environment to make this disease more common. The second piece of information we were able to get was by following up the people who were positive. It looks as if they're about almost four times as likely to have died within the 30 to 40 years of follow-up as people who are negative for celiac disease. And what does this mean? This might suggest that somebody who has silent celiac disease, without ever diagnosis being made, may be more likely to die for whatever reason than someone who didn't have it. So this is two major, this study has two major implications. The first is that celiac disease has become much more common than it was, and we don't know why that is. And the second is that silent celiac disease or undiagnosed celiac disease has, has, may have a significant impact on survival. And suggesting this is a common enough disorder that this could be a significant public health issue in terms of finding the diagnosis. Now, until recently, the standard approach to finding celiac disease has been to wait for people to complain of symptoms and to come to the doctor for investigation. And really much of our educational efforts have been directed at trying to educate doctors to think about this condition when they see patients who have a family history of celiac disease, type 1 diabetes, premature osteoporosis, infertility, or a host of other consequences of the disease. What we call case finding, or looking for celiac disease where it's likely to be. However, this study suggests that maybe we need to consider another strategy. That is the strategy of looking for celiac disease in the general population. That's more like what we would, for example, with testing for cholesterol or blood pressure. Now this is an area that's an active area of investigation not only at the Mayo Clinic but also in other places. So this is an area that will be further tested. Is this something that should be done? We certainly need to be very aware of celiac disease as a much more common disorder than it once was. The yeah, real takeaway so. message, I think, is one, celiac disease has become much more common. And why that is, we need to find out. You know, why would it go from a very rare condition 50 years ago to a much more common condition now? And the second thing is we have to be very aware that celiac disease is a common disorder that affects lots of people. One in a hundred people are affected by celiac disease, though most of them do not know it.